Hey everybody, this is Fago Franklin III with New Station Media. I am here with senior editor John Miller, Miller Jr. How you doing today, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I'm blessed to be here this morning, this afternoon, whatever time zone you're in. Amen. Amen. So before we get into your journey, um, how are you feeling about the uh, Lakers and the Miami Heat? Who do you think is going to win that series? Well, I'm I'm hoping the Heat does. Uh, but I, I just think they're outmanned. Uh, you know, I think the, the Lakers go deeper. Uh, I just like the story of Jimmy Buckets. You know, I like his story. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like a um, uh, uh, the story last year of, uh, of of the Raptors. You know, mm -hmm. like disaffected player finds his finds his spot, wins a you know title. Uh, mm -hmm. The other thing is that you know the Lakers are the Lakers, right? And they were destined, so to speak, to win. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and they started to play better. I mean, they really have started to play better, uh, more cohesively. I don't think there's any, I, I think five, six games at the most, uh, mm -hmm. they'll win. Uh, but mm -hmm. I just like Jimmy Bucket's story. I just like how Miami came out of nowhere to beat, uh, you know, beat Boston, mm -hmm. uh, and really dominate uh, the East when nobody really expected it. Amen to that. So we're going to jump right into your journey. What got you inspired with men in sports media? Athlete, being an athlete, mm -hmm. uh, my dad was a coach uh, way back in the in the the sixties and seventies at an HBCU in my hometown in Winston Salem. He was mm -hmm. a coach at Winston Salem State, and I was a ball boy. I was always around sports, but I recognized early on that you know sports is very capricious. Right, one mm -hmm. day you know you're all league offensive uh, whatever, and you get a knee injury, and you know it's over. Mm -hmm. uh, and so. I thought they needed an. I needed an alternative to sports, and so I love sports. Played sports all through college. Um, still consider myself an athlete now, right? I mean, just not <laughs> exactly. Right? <laughs> I'm still an athlete. I'm just old. <laughs> but <laughs> you can translate that 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 competitiveness, that mm -hmm. that ability to strive for teamwork and excellence. You can translate in it into a career. And so, mm -hmm. as I got older and went to college, I said, "Look, if I can't." play in the NFL, I can cover the NFL. Mm -hmm. right? And so I was became a journalism major uh, and started to write and started to do radio, started to do television. And I recognized, you know, some of the greatest, some of the greatest moments in, in my life could still be sports, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of covering it instead of participating in it. And you have a much longer career. Mm -hmm. you know? And so uh, I recognized that that was a possibility for me. And so then I went to, uh, into the sports side of the business, once I got out of college, I started working at a newspaper uh, mm -hmm. and then got, became a sports uh, uh, designer. You know, back in the day, you had to design the pages, right? Mm -hmm. So I did some writing, did some designing, did some editing, and then I decided that, you know, the reporters are the ones who write the stories, but it's the editors who determine what the reporters write mm -hmm. and edit what the reporters write. And so I decided to go into management and understood mm -hmm. the power of being in charge as opposed to power or the lack thereof of being kind of on assignment to do what's assigned it to you. And uh -huh. so I left the newspaper, I mean, I left the journalism, I mean, excuse me, I left the sports side of journalism uh -huh. and went to the news side and became a newspaper editor for several newspapers. Uh -huh. uh, USA Today, uh, Detroit Free Press, uh, I was a news editor on, uh, on those papers. And then it ended up in Winston-Salem at my hometown newspaper as the managing editor there. Um, and really kind of thought that was going to be the end of my journalism career because mm -hmm. I'd been in it for nearly 40 years and I was at home. Mm -hmm. uh, but the opportunity came along to, to come to work for ESPN for The Undefeated, uh, a platform unlike any other that had been devised. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also had the strength of ESPN behind it. It just mm -hmm. wasn't an everyday startup. And so I knew they'd have the resources and the, the follow through to allow the platform to grow into what it could possibly become. And so mm -hmm. now we're more than four years old, uh, doing really well uh, with content, with content generation, with storytelling, and elevating our presence with inside the Disney bubble. Right. Mm -hmm. So you know, Disney owns the entertainment world like no other company in the world. And so you know, right now we're having conversations with other people inside of Disney to uh, to, to start a book publishing mm -hmm. arm. Right, because we've already published two children's books that are bestseller. So now, mm -hmm. you know, eventually, they're talking about maybe an undefeated book publishing arm, um, mm -hmm. or is that a Hulu channel, right? 
And mm -hmm. so Hulu's a part of the Disney network. And so there are all kinds of possibilities about storytelling. And the thing that really is, is shows how uh, magnanimous, you know, life is sometimes is that the undefeated was there and in place when Black Lives Matter happened. Mm -hmm. It was there and in place when, you know, tonight, who we have on Monday Night Football, you know, league mm -hmm. MVP and his Super Bowl MVP, MVP, two brothers at quarterback, right? And mm -hmm. so we were at that right moment in history when we could see that happen and report it and record it and, and, and show the nuances of what that means better than any other medium in the country. And so we were there prepared to do the work and then history intersected with where we are now, whether mm -hmm. with black quarterbacks or black lives matters. And so right now we get, you know, 200, 300,000 page views a day. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, as far as our reach, uh, you know, we reach all the way, as I said, into Disney and mm -hmm. we're doing some things with them. And so um, my journey is intersected now with the undefeated. But the basis of what I have done all my career was mm -hmm. be competitive. Right. Mm -hmm. Learn as I as I grew uh, and bring other people along behind me, because, you know, as a team, you can't do it alone. What does it mean to you that you can bring meaningful stories to your platform? It means that stories that have gone untold before now, now can be told in a very uh, intuitive, a very essential way in the moment, right? Mm -hmm. Because we saw with Black Lives Matter and the NBA in the bubble, the coverage that Mark Spears did, right? Story mm -hmm. after story after story. You know, one of my favorite storylines is Chris Paul, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, all the work that he did, not only to foment what happened with the bubble and have the teams come back and play, but also his emphasis on HBCUs, historically mm -hmm. black colleges, and the fact that he just enrolled uh, as a grad student in Winston-Salem State University, uh, and 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 one of those uh, uh, one of those connections that I talked about mm -hmm. is Stephen A. Smith, who went to Winston-Salem State University, and who had him on Friday talking mm -hmm. about why HBCUs are important and why he's giving back in the way that he is, and so uh, it's 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 the kinds of stories that we tell how deeply rich they are and how those stories might not have been told by anybody else. What advice or tips can you give people that's just really trying to break into the industry? I suggest, and, and I tell this to young folks I mentor all the time, is that be a jack of all trades, but a master of one, right? Mm -hmm. and so you have to have a functional skill that you can do better than anybody else in your shop better than anybody else in your group, right? Mm -hmm. Or if you're going to be a professional, you know, be, you know, like take the analogy to pro sports, you know, be the best kicker you can be, be mm -hmm. the best offensive guard you can be, right? So mm -hmm. if you're the best at what you are, people will get hired. You will, I mean, people will hire you. You mm -hmm. will get hired. If you're uh, striving for excellence over a career, not just, you know, kind of day to day to day mm -hmm. over a career, then you will be able to to do what you would likely want to do in life, right? Some people have a job, some people have a career, right? Mm -hmm. and so what I tell people is, you know, find something you want to do, whether it's journalism or not, find something you want to do that's going to get you out of bed at 6 a.m. in the morning, right? Because if mm -hmm. you got a job, just you got to work for 40 years, you know, digging ditches is not going to get you up at 6 a.m. in the morning, but your career might. Uh, mm -hmm. And now in the, 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 the times in which we're in, where we're working from home and, and we have to live in the same place that we work. So whether it's rolling out of bed at 6 a.m. to go to the office or rolling out of the bed to go across the room to the laptop or to the desktop, you still need that same drive and that same eagerness to be excellent for one, but also to do what you want to do, do what you believe that you're here to do. How did you have to adapt with the COVID-19 pandemic um, as far as your job is concerned? Not a lot, really, mm -hmm. uh, except for travel. You know, travel is very limited. You know, usually this time of the year, college football, I'm on the road traveling, covering mm -hmm. games or, you know, being in places where things are happening on HBCU campuses. And so that's the main thing. It, it's limited travel. But in terms of the work, I'm still at my laptop. You know, I will you know, work wherever I am, as long as I got a laptop, um, because that's the way kind of the world works now. Mm -hmm. But it, but travel really is the only thing that's been restricted. Um, what is your favorite athlete or celebrity that you have interviewed? Okay, my so my favorite athlete, <laughs> some people might not even recognize, well, they'll recognize the name, but 
Carl Lewis. Okay. Um, Carl Lewis, who at the time was the world's fastest human. He was, you know, had won more Olympic medals than anybody. This was back in 1988, uh, in yeah. the Summer Olympics in, uh, in, uh, in Seoul, South Korea. Uh, and that was right at the moment of a huge doping scandal in the Olympics, right? Yeah. And so Ben Johnson, who was Canadian 100 meter sprinter, had just beaten Carl Lewis in the 100 meters uh, mm. at the Olympics, and Carl finished second. But within a day, they found out that that uh, that Ben Johnson had tested positive for doping, mm -hmm. and so Carl then now was a hundred meter champion, and and so I had the first interview with him after that turnaround, mm -hmm. uh, and that was an amazing interview because everybody in the world was wanting to hear what Carl Lewis had to say, and we were the first ones to to have him, and I was the first one to do the interview. So that was my favorite interview, interviewing him right at the nexus of the moment where everybody in the world was wondering, you know, what was going to come out of Carl Lewis's mouth after this doping reversal. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and my most uh, 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 valued experience as a, as a, as a fan, truthfully, mm -hmm. um, was, uh, you know, I don't think I've ever said this, but it was when I was a kid, mm -hmm. uh, I was the ball boy uh, for uh, the first black, basketball team to win an NCAA title back mm -hmm. in 1967 when Big House Gaines and Winston-Salem State and Earl Monroe won the NCAA basketball title, first black school to win it, uh, mm -hmm. NCAA title. And I was only 12, 13 years old, but I remember that moment as being huge, right? Mm -hmm. uh, historically, even as a 17-year-old, I recognize that this was something that hadn't happened before. Uh, and so when I saw that moment of excellence, even at a young age, I've always aspired to being at a place where I can be excellent and see excellence around me, no matter where it is. And so I see that every day now uh, with my colleagues at The Undefeated. I see that in the jobs that I had at the, the Winston-Salem Journal while I was editor at the Detroit Free Press, mm -hmm. Charlotte Observer, all the places that I've worked at. I wanted to be a team member, wanted to be a leader, and wanted to be excellent what I did. And I think as a career, that's what I bring to uh, my tombstone. <laughs> Let's mm -hmm. They don't be right <laughs> anytime soon, okay? Mm -hmm. But 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 the idea is that you want to be excellent, and no matter what you do, and and if you're doing that and setting an example, then you bring other people along behind you. Mm -hmm. And I really do think that that's important. We have to each one reach one. What advice can you give people that wants to use their social media platforms to talk about you know social injustice, racism, um, sexual harassment, but feel like that, you know, they're going to get sidelined if they're trying to go after a job. What advice can you give them? Okay, so if you mean a journalist, right? If you're a journalist, right, and on mm -hmm. social media, that's different than being just kind of an ordinary citizen, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right, because if you're a mm -hmm. journalist, then there are going to be some things that you have an opinion about that you need to keep to yourself, right? And other mm -hmm. situations that if you're a journalist, you need to talk about it, right? And so. Mm -hmm. If I'm a if I'm a sports reporter, sports reporter, sports writer covering the Carolina Panthers, you know what I believe to be my personal views on what's happening uh, uh, with Black Lives Matter. You know that's not a purview for me as a reporter for the Carolina Panthers, right? Mm -hmm. I want to discuss that on my personal uh, feed, or if I want to keep it to myself, or uh, whatever, mm -hmm. in terms of separating it from your job. That's something as as journalists we need to recognize, right? Because mm -hmm. in the age of, of of Fox News and the age of social media, you can easily conflate what you believe and what you think versus what you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. And so and so sometimes people confuse that. You know, I mm -hmm. know what I think, but sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And mm -hmm. so you know, I learned that from journalism is that sometimes being first is not always being right. Mm -hmm. So it's good to, to jump on the bandwagon. It's good to know and know what you believe, but know what you believe before you jump on that bandwagon. Because mm -hmm. sometimes all is not what it appears, particularly on social media and the internet. I mean, how many examples do we have to have to say that, you know, everything that we see in social media and uh, on Google even is not mm -hmm. factual. It mm -hmm. looks factual. It looks right. It, it's some things are done purposely to inflame, right? Yes, sir. Some things are done purposely to be provocative, but the, but but the, the nature of what they're trying to do is apparent in how they do it. 
meaning mm. not just individuals, but they're you know trolls, um, and we see that all the time. Mm. What is your perspective about the Black National Anthem? I know uh, one of my uh, Facebook friends has stated this before that they have you know sung the national the Black National Anthem, but we can't see anything; it's not televised. What is your perspective about that? Okay, so okay, so first thing is that if we're talking about NFL games, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And so they only play the Black National Anthem at the first NFL home game of each team, right? Mm -hmm. So they're not playing it every Sunday. They're not playing it every game. Mm -hmm. So if people ha didn't see it the first week, they're not going to see it now because it's not happening anymore, mm -hmm. right? And so so let's get that straight, right? You can't okay. be mad at mm -hmm. not seeing something that's not going to be there, mm -hmm. right? And so, but symbolically having them play that the first game of the year I think is important because a year ago that wouldn't have happened. Two mm -hmm. years ago, something might have burned down before it happened, right? Mm -hmm. but, so that was progress, having it played the first game at every home game in the league, right? Mm -hmm. The second thing is now let's hold uh, uh, Goodell's feet to the fire, right? Let's mm -hmm. see what the league is now going to do now that we're into the season, right? Because when those pronouncements were made, we didn't even know if we were going to have a season. Mm -hmm. Now that we're in the season, let's see what the league is doing. Let's see what the players are doing, right? Mm -hmm. Because a movement connotes that it, there is progress, mm -hmm. but that movement doesn't necessarily mean that it is going to happen overnight, right? Mm -hmm. right? And so let's see the movement. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as the, 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 the Black National Anthem, before every game, uh, if you want to see that happening, you need to go to HBCU. <laughs> Amen. Football game or basketball game where they do play lift every voice and sing every time somebody comes on the court of the field. Do you think Colin Kaepernick should be issued an apology by Roger Goodell? I think the league needs to do that right now because it's not just Goodell, right? Goodell mm -hmm. is, is, is the employee of the owners. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right. And so people get that backwards, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, he has to lead in some cases, but other cases he can't because he's not their boss, right? Mm -hmm. They're billionaires. <laughs> he is not. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what the league needs to apologize to Kaepernick because Goodell didn't have a team who could hire a quarterback, mm -hmm. right? Goodell, right. Goodell could not say, I want Kaepernick to have a job. And then one of the owners was, okay, I'll raise my hand. I'll do it. No. Mm -hmm. So it's the other way around. The league needs to apologize, right? Goodell mm -hmm. is an employee of the league. Mm -hmm. And so it's the owners who control the league. I mean, if anybody understands the politics of the NFL, of any league, and the NFL mm -hmm. is probably the best example, it's the owners and, you know, people like Jerry Jones and, you know, and, and the new, uh, 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 the new, uh, the new uh, owners who are now mm -hmm. on the scene, who weren't on the scene five years ago. Right. Mm -hmm. Like the owner in, in Miami. Right. Like the mm -hmm. like new owner in Charlotte. Right. And so these are the folks that uh, 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 fans need to put pressure on. The commissioner only does what the owners say he can do. Mm -hmm. What obstacles did you have to endure with just being in this field? Truthfully, um, you know, uh, the obstacles were, were hurdles, but mm. those hurdles were not insurmountable. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so it's like uh, finding out, you know, if, if you have a health issue, how do you fix that health issue? Right. Mm -hmm. And so I knew if I wanted to succeed in this world that I lived in, not only inside an office, but outside, I have to learn how to get along with people, right? Mm -hmm. I have to understand what their thinking is, not just what my thinking is, right? Mm -hmm. If I want to, if I want to to accede to something, if I want to 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 move into another job, if I want to to give uh, to, to 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 get married, to to raise my kids, which I did, then I have to understand not only how I view the world, but how they view the world in order for me that to help them. And so, mm -hmm. part of my obstacles growing up. And I and I surmounted these relatively early because my father died and I had to figure out how to navigate in the adult world pretty quickly is that, you know, you can't make everybody happy. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some people are some people are just going to be mean and, 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 and disagreeable. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's their personality inside of the workplace and outside. Right. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is going to be a, a, a jerk, I, I can't deal with their jerkness or whatever their stupidity. Mm -hmm. Right, I have to deal with how their stupidity affects me, mm -hmm. and so then if that person's my boss, and I got to deal with it in a, in a certain way, if mm -hmm. it's my coworker, 
a certain way. But if it's not somebody who has an immediate impact on my life, I don't give time and effort to figuring out what their issue is because it has little impact on me. And so once I recognize what the hurdles were individually in my, in my, give you an example. When I, <laughs> this is a good example. When I first got into business of journalism, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I thought I was a hot shot, right? Uh, mm -hmm. went to great school, great, great grades, you know, and I was working hard. Mm -hmm. I was the only black male in the newsroom at the time, right? Mm -hmm. But I didn't think of it in terms of being the only. I looked at it in being the terms of of, of being the youngest, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes as a as a youngster, as a novice, you got to learn some stuff, right? Mm -hmm. yep. Our mm -hmm. ego says to us, you know, I'm in the room now. I, I'm good as everybody else, right? Mm -hmm. But in some cases, we are not, right? Mm -hmm. And so the reality is what I had to deal with, you know, going into the room is not only as the black male, but but as the neophyte as somebody who didn't know that I mm -hmm. had to learn, I had to humble myself and understand that learning from people is a part of the process of growing mm -hmm. and, 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 and learn how the people wanted to teach me, not necessarily how I wanted to learn, right? Because mm -hmm. some teachers are, are, you know, are, are not like, you know, your favorite teacher might be sweet to you, might be nice to you, but sometimes mm -hmm. the, the, te the teacher who's the evilest to you, you learn the most from, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so, I had to begin to humble myself and learn no matter who was the teacher and then recognize that even though I might have thought that there were some issues that that to me appeared to be racial mm -hmm. or, or racially motivated, they were not. They mm -hmm. were getting on my case because they wanted to make me better, not because mm -hmm. I was a black man they were trying to make better. Right. And eventually, mm -hmm. once I had conversations with them and understood what they were what they were saying and where they were coming from, I understood that. And so I didn't let the hurdle, at least early in my career of race, get in the way of me learning what I needed to. Now, down the road, that did come into play, right? Mm -hmm. But by that time in my career, I had the, enough of a discerning uh, eye to recognize what it really was as opposed to what I thought it was. Mm -hmm. What words of an encouragement can you give people that are just discouraged and feel rejected with just trying to get their foot in the door? Um, <laughs> keep pounding that rock. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, you know, there's a, uh, by the way, uh, if you didn't know, uh, I'm, I'm also a, a ordained minister, right? Mm -hmm. And so I try to keep biblical references out of my conversations at times because it, 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 it uh, confuses people. But in mm -hmm. this case, um, I'm going to use a reference from the book of Jeremiah mm -hmm. in which he talks about uh, uh, God gave him a vision that said, you know, keep working on a problem and or keep hitting the rock until the rock breaks. Mm -hmm. okay? Keep pounding, keep using the hammer on the rock until the rock breaks, because eventually it will break. And so mm -hmm. my point is, is that be persistent. Right. Everybody fails. Right. Everybody mm -hmm. fails. It's not a human being ever walk the earth who did not fail. And so use failure as a way or use confusion as a way to figure out what your next step is, right? Because there's mm -hmm. always going to be a hurdle. You just have to figure out how to, to get over them. There's always going to be some confusion, maybe even more now than there was a year ago. There's always mm -hmm. going to be that. So figure out a way to do that. And the important thing is having people around you who can help you figure that out. Family and friends, uh, I just read something recently um, that said, you know, the, the thing that you should value the most in life are friends who love you and love you enough to tell you when you're wrong, but also mm -hmm. when you're right. And so uh, those mm -hmm. friends could be in your family, could be in your frat, sorority, could be in the neighborhood, could be in the buildings you live in. But you need mm -hmm. to surround yourself with people who are going to support you and who will tell you the truth. Um, and my last question um, dealing with the NFL topic, who are who are your favorite teams that you're looking out for? Um, that has been intriguing right now. I know it's early in the season, though. Um, well, I've I'm, I've always been an Oklahoma fan, right? So, Kyler uh, uh, <laughs> Murray, Murray, and and and, the, and Arizona, right? Mm -hmm. He's got some weapons out there now, right? He had Larry mm -hmm. Fitzgerald, uh, uh, and now he's got uh, another top receiver with him out there. So they're two and zero now. Uh, and I think if, if they can shore up their defense, they're going to be a hard team to beat. But mm -hmm. if you look at Seattle, uh, Russell Wilson's throwing the best ball he's thrown in his career. Mm -hmm. All right. And so he's got some receivers now, too. 
Uh, and then, of course, you can't uh, you, you you can't look past Kansas City um, with Mahomes and 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 Andy Reid, right? Mm -hmm. Andy Reid is probably you know got more football knowledge in his head than than some of the some of the entire coaching staffs of some of these other teams. Mm -hmm. and so I, I think with Andy Reid, they've got a great shot at repeating if there are no serious injuries. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm still my still my favorite is still Kansas City, but I think you got to watch out for Seattle. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and and then Arizona. But did you like with Cam Newton? I know Cam Newton has definitely improved since he's been in New England. Well, I, you know, we Bill Roden wrote a piece about Cam last week, and basically yeah. it was like, you know, he had a chance to he has a he has further an opportunity to be himself, right? Mm -hmm. And to have mm -hmm. an offense designed around him, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, look what it, his first two weeks he threw the ball, but he was strategically running when he had to. Mm -hmm. and so I think the rebirth of Cam in New England is about he, he's healed, right? He's getting mm -hmm. past his injuries. He's gotten surgery done. You know, he's got a coach who has faith in his ability. Mm -hmm. So we know, you know, Belichick can get – he can squeeze the ability out of any athlete. And if mm -hmm. so if he can do that with Cam in the next year or two, you know, they're going to be another playoff team. But mm -hmm. watch out for Buffalo, right? Mm -hmm. Buffalo's playing really well now, and New England – is going to have to go through Buffalo this year mm -hmm. uh, and vice versa. Uh, so, but Cam, I, I love to see that story because here's a brother who is doing what he loves to do and has probably a renewed freedom to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you for just coming on my show um, and, and talking about your experience with being in the field. I love it. I love the encouraging words that you have given my viewers as well as myself, my friend. I definitely look forward with uh, keeping in touch and conversing Please with do. you about sports later on. Please do. Look forward yes, to talking to you again. Yes, sir. All right, now have a blessed one. All right, you too. Take care. Yes, sir. All right, now. Bye-bye.